As promised in the much-hyped first video, the second video involves simplifying rational expressions. Um, this is considered to be like a multiple choice type question like you might see on an ACT or something. So there's all kinds of different ways to where you might want to manage time and try to quickly figure these out. Um, and one way I could eliminate a couple answers right off the bat is by asking myself, is the result going to be negative or positive? So I see a negative times a positive and there's no negatives down there. So I'm immediately ignoring A and B. Now if you really had confusion in math, then you might not have made it this far feeling confident, but you could always like plug values in here, like one and then two, and then see if you get uh, things that work out. You know, because if they're equivalent, then the outcome of this guy should match the outcome of that guy if I plug one. All right, so we have you know something with a variable in the denominator, and then something where the variable's off to the side, but really means it's in the numerator. And you know the easiest way to do this is the longest way as well where I multiply the top out, and I divide it by x to the 6, and then I'm like, oh, okay, looks like whatever is the case, there are more x's up top than down below, so that means I would not have an x in my denominator, unless it was written as a negative power. So that's how you could do that. You don't even have to keep simplifying. And then maybe early on, like the more confident you get with these, you're like, well, x to the 7th over x to the 6 is x to the 1. Simplify each expression. State the excluded values. Numero uno. Rewrite the problem. Now, before when we did these, you were only asked to state the excluded values. So we rewrote the problem just for the heck of it. But now we're rewriting the problem and we're going to do something with this. And our special tool is going to be to factor. And I will do a little reminder to you that Anything divided by itself is just 1. Which means that even if you have something ugly as can be, over itself, it's just going to simplify and become 1. And factoring is going to be the tool to make these work out nicely. All right, rational expressions. From the numerator, I can factor out 3, and I'll leave myself with x minus 5. And the denominator, it looks like a more complicated factoring problem. I'm looking for the factors of 10 that add up to negative 7. x minus 5, x minus 2. Look familiar? This stuff should. Which means that as I go here, I can cancel out x minus 5 and x minus 5. And my simplified expression is 3 over x minus 2. But if I get to this end problem... I'm not totally done to where I'm just going to say x cannot be 2. Because at some point in this problem, x minus 5 was in the denominator, that also is a restriction on the domain. So I got two choices. My one choice is to rewrite the original denominator and refactor it again when it's equal to 0. Or I can be like, well, I factored it in this step, and so, since I still hadn't gotten rid of anything or canceled anything out, if I want to find these excluded values, I'll look at the factored form of it and then list 2 and 5. Um, now, these are the excluded values, but I'm also using words like restrictions on the domain. This means that for this function, there would be holes at 2 and 5 if you were to graph this. And if you want, um, I would suggest pulling up GeoGebra typing this whole thing in and seeing what happens at those points. I'll do another one. Problem two. We rewrite it because we're about to see if anything can be simplified. x squared minus x minus 12. From the numerator, I'm going to factor out 12, leaving me with x plus 3. From the denominator, I'm going to realize that this is a factoring problem where I'm going to have to look for the factors of negative 12 that add up to negative 1. So I have x minus 4 times x plus 3. And, you know, there will be times where the numerator and denominator might not cancel out, 
which is kind of frustrating because it makes you feel like you did something wrong. Um, but a lot of the times you can use that as a tool to let you know if you are doing these problems correctly. When things cancel out nicely, you're usually on the right path. And then just like last time, I'm not going to refactor and rework this whole thing because I know that when I wrote x minus 4 times x plus 3, I had already done the factoring work, which helps me set it equal to 0, which then lets me figure out that negative 3 and positive 4 are my excluded values. 3 can be an OYO problem, so I'm going to count down from 5. Make sure you pause the video, because after I rewrite this, the answer is going to pop up. So here, I've kind of alternated the colors on these to help you see that the resulting fractions are all together. And then, you know, honestly, not, not really much of a reason to rewrite this whole thing all over again. So there's 2 and 7, which would be restrictions on the domain, or the excluded values for this function. I think this section will go pretty well, so see how all this bookwork goes. And um, probably just realize the word problems are going to be more challenging.